Let me lay out a scenario for you guys and you tell me how you would feel if this happened to you. Imagine that you're working in radio. You are hosting Morning Drive, the most important time slot in the business. Let's say your show runs from 9 until 12, then you pass it off to your colleague. The lineup has been consistent for five years. The ratings have also been consistent for five years. Your morning drive show, number one in the market. There are even whispers that your show could be going into syndication. The dude hosting afternoon drive, absolutely god awful. Even though he's intelligent, he's a smart dude, he doesn't resonate with the audience. People find him to be unrelatable. Not only that, there is a strong disdain towards him in the market. People don't like him. Ratings during the transition from morning to afternoon drive, they drop 70%. From 11.59 to 12.01, the station loses hundreds of thousands of listeners. Now, keep in mind, this has been going on for five years. Both of your contracts are up for renewal. You go into your negotiations feeling confident. You're expecting a huge raise. With the potential for syndication, you could be looking at hundreds of thousands, possibly even millions of dollars. You enter the office of executive management. They don't even have an offer on the table. They tell you, we are struggling financially. We know we cannot pay you what you deserve. You should go out and test the marketplace. Um, okay, I'm number one in the market. I am the cash cow at this radio station. But whatever, fuck you guys. I'm out of here. You find out later on, management not only kept the huge embarrassing failure in the afternoons, they gave him a significant raise and promoted him to your time slot in morning drive. On the surface, this doesn't make any sense. And to anyone with a brain that only sees the color green and not the color of your skin, it doesn't make sense. But it becomes perfectly clear when you put on your woke hat. You see, you're white. The afternoon drive host, he resides in what the shit fucks call a marginalized group. Even though you generated the revenue, according to the woke commandments, all that money you generated, that is required to be given to the victim. Woke welfare, reparations, whatever you want to call it. We must atone for our white privilege. This man is a victim. It's possible that his great, 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 great grandfather's uncle's cousin's cow was stolen by the evil white man in 500 BC. We must right this wrong. That scenario I just outlined, that is the only explanation that I can think of as to why ESPN extended the contract of Bamani Jones. When I was sent this press release yesterday morning, I couldn't fucking believe it. Bamani Jones? Bobo? The only birthing person living in the class of huge embarrassing failure? This guy? I challenge anyone, anyone, Name someone in the mainstream media that has failed as much as Bamani Jones. Matter of fact, I'll give you something easier. Give me one instance, just one, where Bamani Jones has succeeded at anything. Well, KC, he is the creator of mythical racism. He is responsible for educating thousands of students at woke U campuses across America. No, he failed in that regard too, because no one is buying into claims of mythical racism anymore. But KC, Bamani Jones has been at the top of the woke charts for two years. He ranks number one in the Oscar Mayer category. <laughs> okay, you got me there. Bamani Jones, he's in a class of his own when it comes to taking the woke wiener. But having the necessary space required for dual insertion, that has zero impact on your ability to draw an audience. For the last, I don't know, seven, maybe ten years, ESPN's made every attempt. God only knows how much money they have spent trying to make Bamani Jones a superstar. When they initially signed him, ESPN sold him as the savior of their radio division. They had just lost Colin Cowherd, the radio division. They were lacking in star power, just like the entire network is today. But that was okay. Super Bobo came flying in on his freshly grilled Frank to save ESPN radio. The results... Bobo was the worst national sports radio host in the history of sports radio. That is not an exaggeration. I am dead serious. 
Bamani Jones had the lowest ratings in the history of ESPN Radio. They ended up losing 90 affiliates over it. Affiliates were begging ESPN, get this fuck off my radio. So ESPN complied. What did they do? Well, we can't fire him. We will be accused of mythical racism. I have a better idea. But Monty Jones doesn't have a voice for radio. That was a bad fit. That's our fault. He's better suited for television. Male birthing persons will rush to their TV for a chance to see his bongo. For Christmas in 2017, not woke Christmas, I mean the real Christmas, ESPN wrapped a nice little gift and put it under Bobo's oak tree. When he woke up Christmas morning ready to worship and gather his acorns for the day, he noticed the gift and opened it. It was an hour of free airtime on ESPN immediately following Woke Take. ESPN, they even went the extra mile, gave him a percussion partner so he wouldn't be lonely. They supplied them both with stiff wooden sticks. The show was called High Noon. It featured Bamani Jones and Pablo Torre. It was... It was revolutionary television. Two male birthing persons demonstrating to their viewers how to properly heal a roid ravaged bongo. They even had a segment called Guess the Chest. They would line up the best male birthing persons from the percussion section of the band trying to identify them. Whoever won between Bobo and Pablo was given a fresh glass of milk. Naturally, the show was a disaster. Once again, Bamani Jones set record low ratings in the time slot, losing 60% of the audience given to him by Stephen A. Smith. But ESPN, they had another solution. The thinking was viewers had just been subjected to two hours of mythical racism from Stephen A. Smith on Woke Take. ESPN needed to put something on at noon to lift their spirits. I mean, you can only cry about fake victims for so long. After two hours, the tears start to dry up. They move Bobo and Petey, or Pablo, whatever the fuck. It doesn't matter what his name is. You could call him Howard Stern. Anyone paired with Bamani Jones is destined for immediate failure. They place them in the mid-afternoon time slot as the lead into Around the Horn and PTI. ESPN thought, people enjoy a nice afternoon snack. Bobo can prep tossed salad before our viewers watch PTI. They gave Bobo a nice little hairnet, stuck him in the cafeteria. The result was the same. America told Bamani Jones, get off my TV. Record low ratings in the time slot. When the show was eventually canceled in 2020, ESPN was naturally hit with accusations of mythical racism. ESPN doesn't want to see a black man succeed. This is unjust. It's unrighteous. Bamani Jones made the best cucumber salad I've ever tasted. ESPN would not have canceled this show if Bamani was a white man named Barry. Oh, yeah? Really? ESPN's laid off or parted ways with dozens of on air personalities over the last few years. They were either lowballed in negotiations or not offered a renewal at all. Kenny Mayne, Trey Wingo, both Mike Golix, John Clayton. I forget what the hell happened to Ryan Rossillo. For one reason or another, ESPN has lost proven commodities over the last five years. And the one they bend over backwards to hang on to is Bamani Jones. Bamani fucking Jones? It's not just ESPN. HBO renewed his show for a second season, too. What was his greatest accomplishment on HBO? You guessed it. He set record low ratings. I have never seen one person fail with this much consistency and continue to be given millions of dollars. And look, I am not hating on him because he's making money. Good for Bamani Jones. I will never begrudge someone for making a living. My problem with ESPN and HBO, it's the reason they are giving Bamani Jones money. Yes, I said it. Giving. Bobo is not earning this money. In the press release they sent out yesterday morning, ESPN didn't list one accomplishment from Bamani Jones. Not one. Now, in most cases, when they're announcing contracts, they will list the justifications of the deal. Colin Cowherd is number one in 50% of his markets. Stephen A. Smith has grown the audience on first take. Shit like that. You know what ESPN said about Bamani Jones? 
I'm sure most of you guys are unaware, but after they threw the dumbass off radio and TV, ESPN gave Bobo a podcast. The right time to be a shitfuck. Here on the channel, we haven't talked about Bobo since... God, I think it's been since April after his HBO show went off the air. Why haven't we talked about him? There's no reason to talk about Bamani Jones. He's completely irrelevant. In their press release, ESPN called Bamani Jones a leader in the audio space. Um, what? I checked his podcast rankings. Last week, Bobo was barely in the top 200 in the sports category. They claim Bobo has proven his ability to resonate with fans as well as band-aids. They called him an impactful contributor and plugged his show on their YouTube channel. <laughs> so it got me to wondering, how popular is Bamani Jones on YouTube? ESPN has almost 9 million subscribers on this platform. I have almost 38,000. Bobo released the latest episode of his mouth farting yesterday on ESPN's YouTube channel. I wanted to give it a little bit of time to perform. Here on YouTube, the view counts are significantly off in the first 8-12 hours after you upload. For example, if a video is showing 2,000 views in the first hour, that number is really closer to 4,000. Bobo's latest episode, it was released around the same time as my first video was uploaded yesterday. On a channel with 9 million subscribers, Bobo has 4,759 views, 149 likes, and 33 comments. My video yesterday morning doubled those numbers in the first fucking hour. And Bobo, he even had the assistance of L. Duncan. I don't understand. The channel you're watching now is some dumbass talking for 12, 15 minutes. Bobo has the support of ESPN, high-profile guests, and he's still getting beaten. His butt buddy, Dominique Foxworth, his podcast on ESPN's YouTube channel from Monday, 2,900 views. <laughs> Look, I'm not pointing this out to brag or trying to claim I am more popular than Bamani Jones. That is not the case. His following is much larger than mine. I point it out to show you how unpopular Bamani Jones is while he has the resources, the money, and the support of a billion dollar media company. I have nothing, it's just me. No advertising, no promotion. You guys are my support. You guys are my advertising. You guys are my promotion. This channel happened organically. ESPN, they have forced Bamani Jones on its audience and they continue rejecting him. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, ESPN loses money on his contract. There is no way ESPN's making money off Bamani of Jones. The question is, why do they continue to pay him? You tell me. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.